and whereas Ginny's positive demeanor, very positive demeanor, and uh, has been known and appreciated by her fellow board members. And whereas the board deeply appreciates Ginny's loyal service as a board member and is an effective voice supporting the role of the library in the community. It is therefore resolved that for the reasons enumerated and for other qualities too numerous to recount, Ginny will be greatly missed. And further resolved that the president of the board is authorized to present resolution number 2018-19-200 to Virginia T. George. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we have a motion to adopt that I resolution? I will motion to adopt that resolution. Can we I'll have se I'll second. Thank you, Joe. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Now we can end it. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay. You have ordinance behind tab number eight. Uh -huh. You have the ordinance setting schedule for regular meetings of the board. We generally do it a year from July through June. And it's behind the second page. And the first page is a list of all the holidays so that we make sure that we avoid them. And so are there any... Can we have a uh, a motion? I move approval of the um, schedule of meetings and holidays. I second. Any questions? Any question? Okay. Can we do a roll call vote? Trustee Riddle? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Wolf? Aye. Trustee McDonald? Aye. Trustee Barshes, yes. Trustee Frisch Fishman? Yes. Okay. And one more. One more. Yeah. Hey, hi. <laughs> Trustee Johnson. In, I'm sorry, okay. you need to send one of those. Dan, you need to stand <laughs> up a little taller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a speaker that wiggles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Every year we have an annual decision, we have to approve the annual decision to participate in the public library non resident services program. And uh, at that time, uh, the Board of Trustees shall notify the regional library system within 30 days of the action taken and effective dates and fee formula as determined in this part. The fee formula that we generally use is based on the prevailing tax rate. And so, and that's for, uh, if there's, is there an unincorporated section of Wilmette? If, if they're unincorporated properties, this is an opportunity for someone who is not taxed for library service to participate in the services offered by Wilmette Public Library District. And generally, what's that rate? Um, it is calculated as defined in our policy as uh, being based on your tax bill. So mm -hmm. the annual fee um, is based on your EAV, um, then multiplied by the combined tax rate, which is the corporate fund plus uh, special funds. They pay the what would be their library district tax if they were located in the Wilmette Library District. Correct. The... Um, Typically, we have not sold very many of these. Um, I think the operative number in the last several years has been zero. <laughs> um, but it does create the possibility. Mm -hmm. The principal effect this has, however, is on uh, affirming our participation in accepting resident cards from other parts of the library system. So, we're you know there was a time when we were concerned about this, and did set some restrictions. Since then, Glenview and a couple of other areas have become part of CCS, which means that they are incorporated into our catalog, and the uh, issues that we were concerned about at the time have been resolved. So. We no longer have any reason to be um, even concerned or suspicious about this. There, when we d did have the circumstance that Glenview was not in CCS, there was a there was an exposure um, that uh, that we discussed and had some concerns about. But we've opted into this um, uh, every year since the law that created this requirement. Uh, was passed. So 
um, you know, there's really no problem at all. And now that CCS has expanded to include the libraries from which potential borrowers were previously, you know, attracted to this library but weren't in our district, that's all been cleared now. So because of the expansion of CCS to cover those districts. Thank you. Can we have a motion to adopt the... I have a motion to adopt. Second. You want to do a roll call? Roll call. Okay. okay. Thank you. Trustee Riddle. Aye. Trustee Johnson. Aye. Trustee Rogers. Aye. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee Barshes. Yes. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Okay. Motion passed unanimously. Okay, behind tab number 10 is the library service agreement for Kenilworth. Mm -hmm. It's for four years. It is based on an administration fee plus usage. Uh, one of the uh, trustee Rogers and another trustee helped set this many years ago. And right now, it reflects the maximum, uh, the fee is based, and this is basically the maximum taxable allowable rate for the uh, village of Ken Kenilworth without having to go into referendum. Okay, and do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Sure, I can give a little more background about the agreement. So Kenilworth, as we know, is a community of about 2,500 residents that are situated between Wilmette and Winnetka and the Public Library District effectively covers the boundaries of that village. Uh, Wilmette and uh, Winnetka Public Library Districts have cooperative, cooperatively provided Kenilworth Public Library District um, with service since 1984 under this Library Services Agreement. Um, and the agreement before you this evening would carry this cooperative through its 39th year in 2023. Um, either the director of the Wilmette or Winneka Public Library District serves as the administrator of the Kenilworth Public Library District, typically on an every other cycle. Uh, the current and proposed future contract have Wilmette Public Library District as the administrator, so I'm the director of Kenilworth Public Library District. Uh, Kenilworth Public Library District's property tax, contract annual fees, and administrative fees increase annually as defined in the agreement, and there are two sections in which that it's defined, section 4B and 5B, and the um, rate at which it increases is based on the annual rate of the consumer price index. So on December 23rd, 20, uh, 31st, 2018, the CPI was 1.9. And therefore, all the fees in this contract um, increase over the previous year's um, budget and, and fees uh, by 1.9%. Um, so uh, that draft budget was before the Kenilworth Public Library District um, at their last meeting on April 25th. Um, and they reviewed that budget at that meeting. They approved um, the, the contract that's before you this evening. Um, beyond the dollar figures that, that have the update annually, um, there is only one other substantive uh, change to the contract, and that's in Section 4C. Um, since the prior agreement, the Cooperative Com uh, Computer Services, uh, CCS, the Integrative Library System vendor that both Wilmette and Winnetka are part of, um, they changed vendors. We were with Circe Dynex, and now we're with Polaris, which is an, um, an innovative product. Um, as such, the reports that we use to determine the circulation figures for Kenilworth, um, for Kenilworth patrons' usage at the Wilmette and Winnetka libraries has changed, um, and therefore that section has been updated to reflect the report that we use to collect that information. Um, that said, the figures uh, trend fairly consistently year over year um, between the two libraries with approximately a 60-40 split in circulation uh, with Wilmette Library having this, the uh, slightly higher um, usage rate among Kenilworth patrons. Um, so as I mentioned, Kenilworth Public Library District Board um, approved the proposed renewal agreement that you see before you this evening at their April 25th meeting. And last night, the Winnetka Public Library District approved the agreement at their board meeting. I'm happy to address any questions that you may have about the agreement. Well, I've got a couple of them. Put me in the queue, please. Go ahead. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm going to just ask, sorry, Dan, I, I had raised my hand. So um, uh, just a clarification question. Kenilworth residents then are considered to be, I guess, residents, treated as residents, I should say, for purposes of their um, library membership 
Is, is that correct? Kenilworth Public Library District um, card holders um, receive the same privileges as Wilmette Public Library District and or Winnetka oh, Public okay. Library District board member or um, residents, yes. And then so how is this different than, I guess, the um, areas, I guess what we just approved, the ordinance for the areas of residents or the areas of Wilmette where residents, where it's unincorporated? <laughs> Well, the difference is, is that they're incorporated. Um, Kenilworth Public Library District has its own boundaries, and then they contract service with, with the two libraries as part of that agreement. Um, those residents whose properties are not incorporated into a library district um, are not represented by a library district, and therefore they, would ha they don't have an agreement. I the see. agreement that they have is through the participation as um, per the ordinance that we just approved. Okay, great. And so we would, would, would the ordinance kind of serve as, I guess, a contract then with those residents if they were to decide to become members or a library, have library memberships, I, I suppose? Um, they have it already. They have memberships. As a result of being residents who pay library taxes in Kenilworth, they have all the privileges of Wilmette or Winnetka card holders in those two library districts. So they have access to the two buildings in Winnetka Northfield as if they were residents of Winnetka Northfield and they have access to our services yes. as if they were residents here because those are the terms of the contract. Um, they did not have library services uh, prior to this contract agreement and they formed their district in part because we denied them service after a referendum attempting to annex them to the Wilmette Library District wa was approved in Wilmette and defeated in Kenilworth. So they then elected to form this district, the Kenilworth Library District, and contract for services. Okay. I got it. So they already have it. That's the basic Yes. Dan? Thank you. So it, sound, it seems like the effective tax rate for Kenilworth that full access to Lumet services is much lower than the effective tax rate that Lumet residents pay, but maybe I'm missing something. Is that accurate or inaccurate? That's correct. That's correct. The, the, the reality is that the library district tax rate for Kenilworth is lower than Winnetka Northfield and it's lower than Wilmette. However, neither library expends additional revenue specifically for Kenilworth residents. So this is an agreement that gives Kenilworth residents full privileges in both libraries the and thank, the thank you. Is the by about what order of magnitude lower is the Kenilworth tax rate than the Wilmette tax rate? Is it like a tenth of what Wilmette residents pay, given how sort of little money there is for the community? Well, the problem is 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 more complicated because they also operate under the tax cap. So the only way they could increase their rate would be to go to referendum. That's not a referendum that they are likely to win. Because it based, the question would be, should we approve paying more for what we already get? Right. If we were expending substantial resources in order to serve Kenilworth residents, that would make sense. But we don't spend extra money in order to serve Kenilworth. We extend the services our residents already receive to them as if they were part of our district. There is no good solution under the tax cap that would cause them to be likely to increase their tax rate in order to receive the services specified under this contract. So, and those, are and they, they like are they like 5% or 2%? No, they're, they're, they're between 25 and 30%. Uh, their rate is between 25 and 
of the wheel mat rate, and they're about 50% of the the Winnetka Northfield rate. Um, gotcha. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, you know, but it's is... but it's a problem. It's a problem without a solution under the tax cap. Right. No, I, I hear that. And then the uh, the non-resident program that I think it was Trustee Riddle mentioned that that program, which doesn't really apply to us because it's not incorporated with that, that would do it at the hundred percent rate for the Met. But you just sort of have this. 30 year or whatever relationship with Kenilworth where we allow them in essentially at 25 or 30 percent. Is that basically what you're saying, Trustee Rogers? Well, part of the problem, quite frankly, is this, this contract, as you heard, goes back to 1984. Yeah. There were attempts in earlier contract negotiations by the Kenilworth Board to, look, to explore contracting with a distant library. I believe it was Zion Benton. Oh. <laughs> Is that right? For the purposes of attempting to get library services as non-resident.